Those were the Bradenton of yes the Bradenton of yesterday was a very pretty city, very quaint, and you would have enjoyed living in Bradenton when everything was downtown, the old courthouse, the two theaters, Woolworth, um, that Montgomery Roberts was the fashion store, and uh, you know, uh, Montgomery Ward was downtown, and uh, it was quite a quite a pretty little city. Nice to live in. <coughs> palace Theater, the State Theater. If you didn't like the Palace, you could go to the State. And the state, the state had mostly westerns. The Palace had more of the old time classics. Quite a, quite a pretty city. Uh, all right, we're going to gather together our minds tonight, and we want to pray. I was just out at um, hospice on uh, 26th Street, off 26th Street, and Sister Betty Loach has been taken there, <coughs> and the families gathered there, the parish, um, Dol Dolores Parish, and th that part of the family. Betty was Dolores' sister, as we know, and uh, she's resting there, and they're making her comfortable in the hospice home, and um, unless the Lord would see to intervene in his divine will, she will be probably, possibly going to be with the Lord in the coming uh, hours, coming uh, day or so, and um, we want to remember uh, Dolores and Madonna and the immediate family, Whitney, Nathan, uh, those, those of the Lorena, uh, the immediate family. That's related right close in to Betty. And uh, ask the Lord to comfort them in the time of her passing. She's comfortable and uh, she, we prayed with her. I prayed with her in the emergency room. She was yet conscious and, and asked her to uh, pray with me, and she did. And the Lord has seen fit to let her be in the state of mind uh, that is the state of being at this time. Uh, Betty DeLoach, then uh, Leroy Ware in Manatee, and uh, Sister Yvonne. Uh, did you go home today? Then uh, Yvonne Offhouse, uh, who has pneumonia and is in uh, Blake and not, not in real good condition, Yvonne's not. She's under the oxygen, mm -hmm. giving the oxygen and uh, working with her. And uh, so we want to remember Yvonne Offhouse. You know, she has a little daughter, Katie, that she brings to church with her. And uh, so let's remember Yvonne and uh, there's uh, Brother Bernard, he's in room 341. Back to the <coughs> play. Play. I guess he just moved from one room to the other, from what I understand. He's uh, Sister Solange's husband and Sister Eustace's brother. So he's in like, these are ones up front, and then there's the elderly and the care patients in the nursing homes, and uh, Sister Beverly, Sister Karen, Matthew Hanley and Don Norman, and of course, Sister Barbara here, the Butch's mother. And just some of the people in the nursing home, Sister Frost, south of us, and um, Sister Willie. Sister Willie uh, Langford in the nursing home down the street from us here. God bless the ACL at home, brother. So we want to pray for all of the family of God. and. Uh, Jim Brooks' wife, Marcia, in uh, Kingsport, Tennessee, and uh, we want to remember that family, those needs. And I'm sure there's others on your heart. There is mine. Sister Ethel's um, sister in Anna, Illinois, my sister in Pensacola, Florida, and uh, they're all in need of prayer, assistance from God. I'm sure you have loved ones, you have children, you have perhaps grandchildren, you have <coughs> family that's in need of prayer around you, maybe some close friends, um, those that are out of the ark of safety. I have more concern than I ever did 
about our children and um, I'm praying about uh, really just doing more than we're doing to reach out to our families and try to get them in the ark of safety before the end would come for this generation. And it surely is coming. Every sign is pointing toward a uh, collapse of the uh, world around us as we know it. And uh, even our the gesture of our political figures, <coughs> I don't want to be too personal, but um, I, I don't know. It, it, it's so plain. It seems everybody could see the newspaper publishing where our powers of government are, where the, what they're doing, where they <coughs> are, the compromise that's being made between nations right now and governments, and all leading to one thing, a political a collapse of the structure of the world <coughs> as we know it. And uh, I, I know that the Lord is governor of all and ruler of all, so I place my trust in him. Um, we, we put our trust in our in our Savior. If there's any other special need, we'll take it now. Praise God. We'll remember it. I know there are special needs in your heart, so we'll just pray right now. Heavenly Father, <coughs> we come before you and, and we acknowledge your will in our life and we acknowledge that we are nothing and where nobody is as far as flesh is concerned. And we know that there are many, many, many suffering, suffering souls around us. In the world we live in, there are suffering souls, there are suffering spirits. Lord, let our church become a landmark. Let it become truly a city set on a hill. Let it exercise um, all that we have within us to um, bring people to the cross, bring people to salvation. Let them touch the hem of your garment. Let them feel that is the Spirit of the mighty, mighty God of heaven. Lord, forgive our doubts, forgive our fears, forgive our shortcomings, forgive our lack of being able to sometimes uh, show faith as we need to. And uh, somehow, Lord, our light gets dim in the world around us. But let it shine brighter. Let our light shine, so shine before men that they can see our good works that we only have in you and uh, that they may glorify not us but you, our Father, which is in heaven. Father, look down upon the weeping and the needy and those that are in the uh, the hour of passing, the hour of death, gave a walk to the valley of the shadow of death, fear no evil. Lord, to look down on these that are weeping around loved ones and comfort them. Oh, Jesus, and as we have our sorrows and we have our moments when we bid goodbye, and we know that we going to a distant land beyond our vision to see. Oh, God, help us, Lord, to walk in the light, be in the light, be encouraged, be encouraged in the power of a great God that can keep us in troubled times and troubled hours, troubled moments, Lord, and let us flee to the rock that is higher than us and the shelter, Lord, of your name and you said we will look unto the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord. Oh, Jesus, tonight, we know that as we've gathered in this prayer meeting that we're here for one purpose, to pray, to study your word, to draw near unto you and to understand the plan of salvation in as much as we can. And, oh, God, to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven and understand, Lord, the things we can't understand. Quicken our minds, quicken our spirit.
forgive us of any sins, if there be any, forgive us of iniquity, if that would be, forgive us of our being short of patience, our, our inferior part, our, our part of us that uh, can't sustain itself uh, to praise you, to worship you. Oh, Jesus, come in and fill the need of the church in the hour that we're living in. We plead the blood tonight. We can do no more than to plead the blood, to plead the blood of the cross, the power in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, heal our sick. We can't heal the sick. We can't make them whole. We can't make them be forgiven of their sins. We can't arouse the mind of people to hear the gospel, to listen to the gospel. Lord, forgive those who would criticize us and come against us and help us not to take an angry spirit or a spirit, Lord, that would want to do the same thing toward them, but to forgive them, Lord, and, and just say they don't know. Lay not this sin to their charge. Uh, keep us in the right spirit. Keep us, Lord. If we're smitten on the one cheek, turn the other. And oh, Jesus, to love our enemies and to bless them that do curses. Do good unto them that despitefully use us, that we may be the children of the Most High God. Oh, let our hearts be clean tonight. Let our hearts be clean. Let our spirits be clean as we approach the throne of grace and we plead before the throne of grace and we come into this Bible study. Lord, let our minds be clean and let our spirits be clean as we enter in, Lord, to the sanctuary of the house of God. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the holy name. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, we love you tonight. We worship you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. We give you glory and honor. We give you glory and honor, Lord. Praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. Jesus, we'll love you. We'll praise you. We believe you've heard us. We believe we're not going away empty. We believe that you've listened to all the words we've said. We believe you understand even that which we can't. You're still on the throne. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Crucified, risen again. Coming back one day for us, the church. Praise your name, Lord. Help us to endure to the end. Help us, Lord, to endure to the end that we may be saved. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Precious Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise the name. Praise the name. Praise the name. Praise the name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name. Brother McCann, let's continue to pray for Brother George McCann. I haven't heard anything, but let's just continue to pray for Brother George McCann. Uh, cancer of the throat. Um, I was impressed, I believe, of the Lord. I want to be careful when I say God spoke to me, and and I was impressed of the Lord. I like to be careful to always say that I believe that He did, and um, and not be uh, so uh, belligerent or 
haughty before God to say, well, he just spoke to me, and I know he did. <coughs> Approach his throne in humility and humbleness before him, and to uh, say that I feel he did. And um, I'm going to take a, a different a different direction in the Bible study tonight, and I, I would like for us to learn in our Bible study on Monday night, learn, and you may say, I already know, I don't need to learn. Well, if that's be the case, then you do. But I'm still learning. See, I, I feel I'm still learning. And I feel like I would trade all I know about the Bible for all I don't know. And I would get the best of the trade because there's such, it's such a vast book. It's such a vast mm. book. It contains the mind of God. It does contain the mind of God. The intelligence of the Creator is invested in this book. Uh, these books, the Bible, the Bible says it, which it's called. And so I, I have, there's two key scriptures, and and I, uh, when I say I want to. <coughs> Take a little different turn. I'd like to start in the in the beginning of the Bible and systematically go through the Bible in the not only mean every word, every line that would take us into the years to come, but to uh, capsulate the Bible, bring the Bible together in uh, levels of the scriptures. Uh, the the, the synopsis of, of change in the Bible from old to new, from the beginning to the ending. Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega. That's Greek, of course, the Alpha Omega. That's the uh, Greek alphabet um, of the beginning and the ending. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. And the scriptures declares he was the end of God's creation, God, Jehovah God, the Father, and he, he was the beginning. Uh, he was the beginning and the ending, and by him were all things created that are created, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, that honor is given to the Son. So to understand how that the Father did this in his planning and some as much as we can, as much as God will grant us to understand. And so I'd like to do that, take the Bible in that pattern, and um, let me move my jacket, I'm warm in here, put this on outside, it feels good, in here it's warm. Uh, thank you. But uh, I'd like to do that. And there's two scriptures that I think that uh, if we, we can, I'd like to join together. Um, and, and one of them um, and, and is in Ephesians, that is in, uh, yes, Ephesians 1 and 10 uh, in the New Testament. And um, chapter 1, verse 10 of Ephesians. And then the other would be in the Old Testament and Isaiah, the 46th chapter, and verse 10. Um, in the letter to the church of Ephesus, Paul said in verse 10, um, well, let's link 9 with it because we have to do that. Verse 9, having made known unto us, now this is the apostle writing to the church, having made known unto us, the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. Now, this is the Father. You have, to, you have to separate the Father from the Son because they are two separate deities. The Father, the greater, the Son, the lesser. The Father and the Son. And though they're one in their counsel, and they're one in their purpose, and they're one in their um, relationship. They're not one being. 
as the apostolic people teach. Uh, there are two separate beings there, yet one in those things. But notice he said, having made known unto us, that's the church, the mystery of his will. So his will is a mystery, isn't it? If it wasn't, everyone could understand it. Uh, according to his good pleasure, not our pleasure, his pleasure. Everything that God is letting us understand about his will, and every bit of his will that works to perform God, to bring about God, the plainness of God, the openness of God, the greatness of God, is according to his pleasure, not our pleasure. Not, not what they, we, not, in other words, it's not, we're not dictating, he's dictating. We're not telling him, he's telling us. At all times, he, we're subordinate to him. And his creation is subordinate to the creator. And so he said, verse 10 then, that in the dispensation, uh, the dispensing, the giving out, that in the dispensation, <laughs> of the fullness of times, plurality. See, dispensation, that's one, that's his singular will, giving out what he wills, thy will be done. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, times is what he gives us. Eternity is what belongs to him. We're living in his times now in his time of his times. Put it that way, that's better. We're living in the, in, in, the, in the time of his times. He holds the times. We're living in the time he has given us. So he said that he might gather together in one, in one. Where's that oneness? all things in Christ. So everything is eventually to be centered in Christ. Every bit of his will, his purpose, his activity, his eternity um, is to be centered in Christ. And, and there will be no one worshiped on the earth but Christ. There will be no one given glory but Christ. Before God resumes and assumes his total lordship, godship, over man, over creation. See, at one time, God had total praise. Now we praise the Son. He allotted that. He allowed that. We couldn't do that and be in his will without he allotted that. But so God does not have a total devotion or praise nor attention. Jehovah God, the Father, that you've never seen, I've never seen, and no man has ever seen. They saw Jesus. Jesus never said no man had ever seen him. He said no, uh, uh, he said no man had ever seen God um, at, no at no time. So that, but but we've seen the Son. That man has seen Son. I didn't, but I've seen him in the vision of the Spirit. But not uh, they saw him on earth as the Son of Man. But he said. In one, all things in Christ, both which are in heaven. See, some things um, that is apart from us now is in heaven. But that has to become one with that which God has in the earth. And so that everything that's in the earth will be open to heaven, and everything that's in heaven will be open to the earth. That God will reveal it so that God himself in the book of Revelations, not the Son, but God himself will dwell among men. God himself that has never, never visited the planet Earth, never been in the form of God, the personage of God on the face of the Earth, only he sent his representatives. He created Adam, that was his representative. He created the last Adam, Christ, that was his representative. Yeah. But God, the Father, has never been, that we have record of, 
on earth, but the scripture said he will, he will dwell among men. Uh, he will come, God himself. And then he uh, will finish the work of wiping away all tears and, and the earth will be, of course, in its uh, perfect state then at that time. But um, here he said, the, the things which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him, we, that has to be in Christ. Christ himself has to bring that about by his perfect obedience to the Father. Now, I wasn't going to use the scripture, but I will because it's necessary now. And I'll get to the beginning of the uh, beginning in Genesis and our leveling out of the scriptures. And we're going to be in this area, so you'll have plenty of time to comment, ask questions, and and make comments, what have you. But go go into 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Go, in, go into 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Be sure we understand this. This goes right in conjunction with Ephesians 1 and 10. Um, verse uh, 24, um, I believe is our beginning. Um, <coughs> yes. Verse 24, chapter 15, 1 Corinthians. Then, then cometh the end. Now this is the end. That's no more after this. The end is the end. There's no more after the end. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. He, that he should be capitalized there, but it isn't. That's Christ. No one else delivers up all things to God, but Christ. He shall have delivered up the kingdom, because the kingdom belongs to Christ until this time. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But he delivers it up. He steps down. He abdicates uh, the throne. He no longer is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. To God, he gives it back to the Father. Um, that's why Jesus said in Matthew, the sixth chapter, they said, teach us to pray. He said, pray after this manner. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy so God has a kingdom. Thy kingdom come. It wasn't there because Jesus must possess the kingdom. He must possess being king of kings. But he said, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. See, in earth as it is in heaven. So then he said here, even the Father, when he, that's Christ, shall have put down all rule, Every bit of rule, whatever it is, political, military, social, uh, anything man, man tries to rule with, anything any creation tries to rule with, it's put under his feet. It's put down. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority, all presidents, all potentates, all rulers have to be put down and, and power, any power, military power, social power, uh, any kind of power, educational power, um, and anything to do with power. That's, it must be put down and he puts it away and he reigns over it for he, Christ, must reign or must rule till he, Christ, hath put all enemies under his feet, all enemies of man, all enemies of Christ, <coughs> All enemies of perfect creation, all enemies that uh, permit sin uh, in the earth must be abolished, done away with, and put down. And the last enemy, this is the last one, he saves this till the last. The reason he saves death as the last enemy is because he uses death to destroy the ungodly. The ungodly must die. They must be judged. <clears throat> so he doesn't let death be put down till the last ungodly man or ungodly woman or sooner. They are dead. They are dead. They can't exist anymore. They can't be on his earth. 
He abolishes them. They're gone. Um, as it was in the beginning, so it will be in the end. Yes. Because in the beginning, uh, there, was no, there was no sin, there was no death. So death must reign till sin has been put out of the earth. Because he uses it as an enemy to destroy man. Not the, not the children of God, because a child of God only sees death in the body. Not the soul, not the spirit. That lives. That goes back. That returns. The spirit shall return. Ecclesiastes 12 said, Then the dust shall return to the dust, and the spirit shall return to God, who gave it. So there, there's no, there's no, this, the last enemy that is destroyed is death. Now, Verse 27, for he hath put all things under his dominion, under his rule, under his feet. But when he saith, when he makes the statement, all things are under me, all things are put under him, it's plain, it's manifest, it's plain that he, now here's another he, and this he here is not the same he as we've been reading about in verse 24, 25, uh, th this is God. This is Jehovah God. That he is accepted. He never was. He never can be under the feet of any uh, of his created beings, including his son. That he, he is accepted, which did put all things under Christ or under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, Christ, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto, unto him, the Jehovah God, that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Now when this, this is fulfilled and death is gone, the beast is gone, the false prophet is gone, the devil is gone, all these enemies are gone, then God is all in all. And God, then, is, is, everything is one in Christ that God may then be all in all. Sorry. Brother uh, Dale. Uh, this dispensation, I understand, will, will end at the end of the thousand year millennial reign. It's when uh, God brings the the temple down and, and he fits everything under his feet. I'm saying, well, I had to have some kind of dimension there at the end of the thousand years. It's whenever uh, Jesus turns everything back over to him. It's well, there's a little season, though. There's a little season uh, before he does that. Uh, Brother Dale, I agree with you that the thousand years ends. Uh, let's, let's look at, and I say that, and let me go to a scripture so that we can discuss it and it can be plain. Um, I agree that at the end of the thousand years, that's the end of uh, Christ's rule uh, of the millennium. But look, look at Revelations 20, um, and he said, uh, uh, let me see, let's pick up, well, um, let's pick up verse 5, um, and, and um, uh, verse uh, 7, let's pick up, pick up verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, or they're through, see, something happens right there. Satan is loosed out of his prisons, all right, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, which is spoken of in, in Ezekiel 38, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. See, um, there's, a, there's a period here, Christ rules, and then uh, Satan is loosed out of his prison. He goes back to work in the earth, and the earth is troubled, and the nations <laughs> are gathered uh, together uh, then for the final, uh, final battle. For the final day, um, and and there's there's uh, the thousand years are finished. Um, go back up to verse three. 
uh, and cast him in the bottomless pit and shut him up, set a seal upon him, this is Satan, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And so there's a, now we know 